It's now time to review headlines of today's newspapers. We have Ombudsman of This Day and Arise Media Group and This Day Newspaper Limited's Group Executive Director, Kaya D. Konalafe. Kiki, it's good to have you here today, sir. Good to have you. Good morning, Good morning, Aaron, and yes. good morning, uh, Ito. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, are uh, Stephen uh, Oji. <laughs> where, where have you put the guys? <laughs> your, your regular Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. We'll, miss oh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll miss them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get straight into today's newspaper. Of course, we'll start with this day. And the headline that screams out there Tenebo recalls all ambassadors, gives them October the 31st deadline to return to Abuja. The writer there says exempts Nigeria's UN permanent representatives in New York and Geneva. This has been making quite a lot of headlines. We had someone here speak about this, talking about Professor Denny earlier on. What's your take on this? Some are saying that Tinubu wants to probably replace them with his own people as compensation for all that happened during the general elections. And some are saying it's the right thing to do. The president still has the right constitutionally to withdraw these people, realign the policy, foreign policy, and maybe send them, send some other people back. What's the take about this? Yeah, there is nothing unusual for uh, a president, you know, to uh, appoint his ambassadors. After all, who is an ambassador? An ambassador is the representative of the president in the foreign country. So it's perfectly within the prerogative of uh, um, of the president, the time is ambassador. Now, the usual, uh, I mean, uh, tension, you know, uh, between uh, the uh, career diplomats, you know, and uh, politicians in uh, in terms of uh, uh, seeking uh, uh, appointments, you know, uh, for. I mean, I, I mean the, the appointments to ambassadorial post. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it should also be, very, I mean, be, I mean, be understood. It's like that in perhaps every other climb. In the United States, uh, UK, and Canada, and others, the, the tension is always there. For instance, the, the jealousy, the professional jealousy of the career diplomat should be understood because that is their career, you know. So when you are in the foreign service, you are recruited as an officer. I mean, your ambition, legitimate ambition is that one day you end up being appointed as an ambassador to a foreign country. It's like that is the, the zenith of your career, perhaps, in the foreign service. So the professional jealousy is understood. Also, uh, it is not, like I said, it is also not um, uh, unusual, you know, for politicians, you know, to also be uh, appointed. For in, the, in the U.S., you know, I mean, the ratio usually is between 30 to uh, 70. That is, we have 70%, you know, uh, of the appointments, you know, going to career diplomats, and maybe about 30%, you know, going to uh, politicians. You know, uh, Obama, for instance, was, uh, you know, famously accused, you know, of uh, giving, you know, diplom, you know, uh, diplomatic uh, appointments to people you call the the bundlers. That is the the fundraisers, those who raised the fund, you know. In fact, there was one particular president in America who actually, you know, stipulated the amount that if you, if your donation is not up to this amount, you know, for the campaign, you don't expect to be given uh, mm -hmm. uh, ambassadorial appointment. Appoints and of course, you know, uh, uh, you have had uh, uh, politicians who have been, you know, great uh, uh, diplomats, you know, you know, ambassadors of their country. Well, for instance, uh, senior Bush, uh, George. H.W. Bush, you know, for instance, you know, is, today if you look at his profile, you will identify him as a politician, you know, also as a diplomat, you know, that he was, we could call him the architect of uh, America's uh, uh, foreign policy towards uh, uh, China, you know, and so you have, you know, in, in many, in many clans. So there is nothing, you know, that is unusual, you know, the tension will always be there, you know, uh, Korean politicians, uh, I, mean, I mean, Korea, Diplomats legitimately will want to be posted, you know, uh, you know, to diplomat positions, you know, because that for them is uh, a, 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 I mean, a sort of uh, professional fulfillment. But it is perfectly within the powers of the president, and also to uh, post. I mean, to uh, I mean, to you know, because also we must also understand this. You know, I mean, we shouldn't mystify it. The job of an ambassador is not just the job of a technocrat. Yes, it is primarily that you know, it's a, a technocratic job. It's also political. 
because that person is going there to further the objectives of his country, you know. And so, in some postings, you need somebody who is politically nuanced, you know, sufficiently, who will be able to uh, project the policy, you know, of his uh, uh, country pro uh, pro uh, you know, uh, properly. So, if a president thinks that uh, his political ally, a politician, is the person who is best suited to do it, I mean, there is nothing, there is nothing wrong with it at all. All right. On um, top of the masthead. Yeah of this day. Um, there is this story that has been garnering quite a lot of attention on social media um, for other reasons, but it says Tenable leads Dangote, Otedola, Elumelu, Ovia, Oyema, and 33 other business leaders to India. And some were trying to make a mockery of some people and said they were shocked that people like Obi Kubana and the rest of them were not invited. Now, these are the real billionaires that we do have in Nigeria that are going to attend this particular business forum in India. No, I, I think we should... Uh, <laughs> no, that's just on the light. Yeah, on, on the lighter oh, note, yes, 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 yes. I think, yes, I, think, yes I, I, I understand you. I mean, that is um, on the lighter note. But, um, you know, more, ser more seriously, you know, it is that in doing so, yeah. uh, the administration, you know, perhaps is making a statement, mm. you know, uh, in terms of... Uh, is diplomacy, you know, that is the primacy of the economic goals, you know, of the administration, you know, that, that is uh, what is there. And I think uh, the, the, the villa, you know, also should also make further clarification, because if you look at it, it is like going to India, you know, next week, I mean this week rather, is like killing uh, uh, two birds, you know, with a stone, yeah, as it yeah. were, you know. Apart from the G20 meeting, which Nigeria has been invited, Nigeria is not a member of G20, yeah. but Nigeria has been invited. But we also have this uh, Nigeria-India, you know, presidential, you know, uh, 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 conference, you know, which, of course, you know, will be uh, providing a platform for interaction between uh, uh, Indian businessmen as well as Nigerian, uh, you know, uh, 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 I mean, businessmen, you know, and of course, the businessmen who are, who are going, of course, they are going, you know, as businessmen, you know, not as uh, uh, official, uh, uh, I mean, delegates, but that they are going, I mean, that the, that, that the president is, uh, I mean, that they are going to India at the same time that the, the president is making uh, a visit, you know, to, uh, to India for the G20, I think, you know, it says something about, uh, you know, the economic, you know, uh, uh, direction, you know, of the administration. Well, there's one yeah. story that stands out there for me, of course, following what happened at the 63rd uh, uh, referendum uh, last week. Obaseki moves to remove deputy's office from government house. It seems as if this relationship between the governor and his deputy has taken another turn for not the best, <laughs> but definitely uh, no, for the worst. For the worst. Because, you know, taking him out of the government house, and there was even after following that particular event, they said that he would have to always take a, uh, send in, a, 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 to get his media aid, he would have to go, you know, contact the Edo State uh, government directly. What are your thoughts about this, Mr. KK? <laughs> my, uh, my thought is that uh, uh, Governor Obaseki and his, and his uh, uh, deputy, uh, uh, deputy Governor uh, uh, Fletcher, uh, you know, should uh, both be conscious of the need to bring majority, you know, uh, I mean, to put it on, on display, you know, uh, in handling this matter. You know, I mean, they are politicians, you know, there are issues of ambition involved, you know, uh, questions of, of uh, loyalty and the rest. But all these things could be managed in a very decent you know, mature way, you know, at least, uh, uh, I mean, in such a way that it does not distract, you know, from the primary purpose of which they are in government, which is the, you know, the welfare and security of people of uh, uh, those state, you know, because don't forget that, I mean, just a few years ago, there were, you know, uh, uh, political, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, bodies. So if you, if you have this agreement, it's, which is normal, mm -hmm. that you are, I mean, you, have, you know, in a, uh, I mean, both of them operate, in a democratic space, so uh, to have this agreement, to have um, uh, you know different you know uh, ways of seeing things, it's not. I mean, there's nothing abnormal you know about it. You know. But what with abnormal now is that if the way it is handled, you know, you know that you now cross the peri perimeter of decency, you know, it will not be good. So, so the uh, advice would be that 
both sides, both the, the boss, the governor, as well as his uh, deputy, you know, to uh, bring uh, maturity into well, that's more uh, of that to, be, story. to bear, you know, on the issues. There. Yeah, there's more of that story on uh, page Which eight. Means. But if we go to this day style now, uh, on the cover of this day style today, we have Omon Odike championing youth empowerment. And of course, on the, uh, the cover notes for their reads, uh, with over 20 years of diverse experience ranging from legal practice to HR consulting, Omon Odike's journey is an inspiration in itself. As the CEO and managing consultant of You Connect Human Resources Limited, one of Nigeria's foremost HR solution companies, she has steered the company's growth at an outstanding rate of over 100%. Annually, so of course, kudos to uh, Mrs. Omon Odike, uh, championing youth empowerment. Uh, there, Aaron. All right, so to the Guardian, um, the headline that screams out there says, "Why parents must safeguard children against poisonous online menu." Uh, but um, there is a big story there. Our framework to cushion hardship on Nigerians is being frustrated by government. And they talk about this particular administration, and more importantly, what can be done to cushion the effect of this. Of course, uh, it was on, it's on page two, and it's been said that um, warning strike to show preparedness for total shutdown of economy later this month. That is what the NLC are saying. To cushion hardship, give wage awards, address housing, transportation costs, then five billion to states um, irrational could be used to provide CNG powered buses. This is what Garuba is saying. Mm -hmm. Low wage worsening working poor situations, says Emmanuel. So the NLC actually firing and blowing hot on this particular one. And they're saying that a framework to cushion hardship on Nigerians is being frustrated by the government. I want to go on strike as well. Yeah. It is significant to remark that um, the uh, the story of uh, the proposed strike, you know, the warning strike mm -hmm. you know, by NLC, you know, is the issue of the moment. As you could see, that uh, virtually uh, all the newspapers, you know, have it on their uh, front pages. You know, that's because it's, uh, uh, the the implications, you know, uh, for the economy, you know, uh, you know, for the society, you know. Uh, means if uh, eventually uh, uh, NSC embark embarks on this strike, even if only on a warning note, because you must understand that when we are talking about a warning strike, it's just like uh, a teaser, you know, as it were. You know, that is to say that if you, uh, if you the problem is not resolved, then the real strike might come. But then the important thing is that it is still possible to avert even the warning strike. You know, giving, you know, uh, engagement, you know, uh, 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 from both sides, you know, the government and labor, in, in good faith, you know, and mutual, you know, uh, you know, respect of, uh, you know, uh, no, But they are yeah, actually yeah, accusing yeah. the federal government yeah, yeah. of frustrating the their plans to probably cushion the effects of the whole rise in cost of mm, living. No, it's not. It's not uh, NSC that will cushion the uh, the effect. I mean, that, that they, they are accusing the, the government of not fulfilling this uh, promise, a, a promise yes. you know okay. of not uh, uh, implementing you know, the uh, the policy you know I mean, rather the, the program rather not just not the not policy you know the program on uh, uh, on distributing or of being of palliatives you know and that's what i'm saying that it, it therefore there is need for government to engage labor you know and there is also the need for labor to be responsive you know, to signals from government, you know, that is, is, is engagement. The reason why I'm saying this is that the real issue is not even palliative. It comes from, from his <laughs> this, uh, I mean, textbook, uh, I mean, definition, you know. A palliative is just a, a temporary, you know, measure you, you take to deal with what you can call, you know, an, uh, I mean, an emergency, you know, a desperate situation. But labor, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it should be advised that you will have a more strategic you know, uh, approach, you, you develop a more strategic approach to this problem because the real issue on ground today is that this economy, this political economy is plagued with poverty and inequality, you know, True. yes. And the mission of NLC is to ensure that, you know, that 
you know, uh, strategically that the, uh, the, the government you know, you know, comes up with a mix of policies that will ensure significant reduction, if not elimination you know, of uh, poverty you know, you know, and you know, lessening uh, uh, inequality. And that will be a question of you know, uh, strategic you know, policy engagement. You know. In doing so, it's not just enough to say that government will, what's political, whether you give 500 billion naira to each of the states, I mean, I mean, whether you give five billion naira, you know, to each of the state or make um, uh, other uh, happy concessions, these are not strategic, you know. And that is why uh, uh, NSC should see beyond, you know, palliative, you know. And that is why perhaps, um, you know, a strike, you know, if, if you could go on a strike today on palliative and then maybe something is rushed, you know, and uh, you feel it's sub that, is, that is not the definitive uh, uh, solution, you know. So uh, the the thing is to for NLC I mean, representing you know uh, you know the working people you know to be on alert you know in terms of policy engagement that every step that is taken and in doing so in doing so the NLC also should have uh, in its method you know should adopt you know a political economy ap approach you know which used to be that is actually coming up you know with suggestions you know alternative policy you know. Because, for instance, I mean, look at the uh, eight-point uh, uh, agenda. You know, could make a critique of it and maybe how it could be done uh, 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 a, bit, a bit better. You know, the, the way you, you are having it, or when you have this uh, tendency, you know, of uh, you know maybe uh, as an uh, uh, a philosophical underpinning of the policies. You think that okay, all all the problems that you have, they are going to solve it by market forces. You know, yes, you know, market. Could be good in uh, you may think that it's efficient, you know, in producing. But in terms of, I mean, I mean, in terms of uh, allocating resources, you know, you know, market might not be the just way, you know, of of, do, of, of doing it. You know, I mean, uh, policymakers will be t t telling us about how they want to boost growth rate and the rest. Yes, you, yes it's good to boost rate, but we must also emphasize distributive justice. Yes, it is good. I mean, you can expand the GDP, you can make the economy to grow, yet the inequality in the system could be worse than even what, 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 what we're having now if you don't pay attention to distributive justice, you know. So these are strategic issues that NS, I mean, need to be uh, uh, informed because even as of now that we're having an economic crisis, it does not affect everybody equally, you know. So what the economic crisis means to the rich is not the same that it means to the poor. You know, for one man, perhaps it is because he cannot, you know, uh, uh, increase his fleet, you know, of, of cars. Another person, the economic crisis means that he cannot have his next meal, you know. So this is an issue that you should have. So and that is why I'm saying that, you know, the issue is not just, uh, uh, I mean, it goes, yeah, uh, of course, it's within the legitimate uh, 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 right, you know, of, uh, NLC, you know, to use the method of strike, you know, to push his position. But I'm saying that you should, you should, you should see beyond strike and also develop a strategy, you know, of you know policy engagement with government, and that is by by the, uh, by uh, uh, coming up with alternative, you know, solutions, you know, which are pro people, you know, you know, you know, and in, in doing so, that will, that will help in moderating the implementation. Of government policies in the interest of the of the, of the people, you know. So, so it's going it's going to be a long a long run. So, it, I mean, it's, it, uh, beyond the tension which you may have, perhaps in the next few days, you know, that the job of uh, I mean of uh, uh, labour is more than that. And of course, for the for the government, you know, should also be sensitive, you know, that is in, right. in, in response, you know, and then be open to you know uh, uh, different perspectives, you know, in how to solve the problem. Yeah, of course, it is, it is within the prerogative of government to implement policy, but I, it is also advisable, you know, for government also to listen to you know alternative perspectives, you know, in how to bring uh, to bring about solutions. Yeah. Solution-oriented conversation that should be had. Thank you so much. We always love having you on here on the morning show. We respect your analysis, and uh, we've come to the end of the show, Aaron. Yes, we have. <laughs> Thank you so much.